Okay, so here we go. We were we had talked about a lot of these things, but uh, zeros. The zeros are also known as the roots, which are also known as the x what? The zeros, the roots, the x intercepts. All right. So here's the x intercepts. Do you remember how those were important? When it did this bounce thing, do you remember how that was different than a cut through thing? Okay, so here is this thing bouncing at four, and that has a multiplicity of what? Two. And the cut through had a multiplicity of one. And if it ever snaked through like that, oh, I am terrible at drawing those. Okay, it's got to be increasing at a decreasing rate and then change to increasing at an increasing rate. If I go slower, I'm better. Okay. So that kind is a triple, okay? So that's worth three. All right, so the cool stuff you can do with that is that if I know it's hitting right here at about one and a half, then I can say that this has a factor of x minus 1.5, and then since it's a cut through, I put it to the one. What? Oh, you're right. Sorry. There we go. Now negative 1.5, which is why I screwed it up, uh, can go in here and solve it and make it zero. Okay, then the other one, which we're going to say goes through four, is at x, and this is this minus four or plus four? Minus four, because that's a positive four. And then that one's a bouncy, so it uses a two. So there's my equation, except I say y equals. And then the last thing i got to check for is that since it's going up here, what do I know about the front? It's got to be positive. And I wouldn't, I, if I don't check for that, a lot of times it is going down and you forget that there's supposed to be a negative at the front like this. Okay? But this one's going up, so it's positive. All right, so there's my equation. It has a degree 3, which matches up with how it's going up and down, and therefore it's odd. All right. Now, why does this look so different from this? Because this, first of all, may not necessarily be right. But let's say it is right. If I multiply all of this out, it might equal that. That might be general form for that. Now, the other thing that's a factor that we don't talk about much is that you could have a number in front here, a scale factor, and I don't know what it is. It could be stretched, because if it's stretched, it would still be a cut through here, but it was stretched higher, that's all. And it would still bounce here, and it would just be stretched higher and lower. And, and so the point is that there could be a stretch factor here that we don't know about. You do not have to uh, do those on the test. All right. That covers a lot of stuff. Now, let's see if you learned anything. Tell me one thing you know about this polynomial. It's what? It's even. Why do you know it's even? Because both ends are going up. Very good. Give me something else you know. It's positive. Why do you know it's positive in front? Because the right-hand side is going up. That tells me it must, the equation for it must be positive at the beginning. Blah, blah, blah. What else do I know? It's got three roots. How do you know it's got three roots? Because it's got a bounce. That's worth two, three, uh-oh, four. It's got to be four roots. See that? Okay, because it's got two plus one plus one. And wouldn't four make sense for the fact it's got to be even anyways? You know, it's got to be, because they're both going up. So it's degree four or more. Because if it's not degree 4, couldn't it be a degree 6 with two, what, imaginary roots? So it's a degree 4 at least. So it could be a 4 or, since imaginary is coming back, it's a 2, 4, or a 6, or an 8. All right? All right, so we know a lot of stuff about that. And the last thing I'd like you to do is write me the equation for this. I'll pause. We'll see if you can write the equation that involves these guys right there. Okay, so here we go. Um, this one right here, that is at negative 5, and so I'd say x plus 5, and then it's a bounce, so I go squared. Is that what you hit? All right, then this one right here is at negative 2, so I'd say x plus 2, and then I'd say to the 1. And you don't even have to have it to the 1 there, because that's what it'll be if you leave it alone. And then the last one is a positive 1, and that's x minus 1, also to the 1. And there is your equation. What should I check, though, before I'm done? Make sure it's positive because this is going up, and so therefore it's positive on the right. So, yeah, there's a positive in front. Don't have to put a plus. But. All right. Raise your hand if you had the right equation for that. Good. And what is missing that we haven't taught you how to mess with? I told you that just a second ago. 
What's missing? Possible scale factor. This could be like a 2 or a 3 or a 4 or a whatever. I don't know. So there could be a scale factor in there, and you can figure it out. It's not that hard to do. You put a variable here, and then you take any point that you know works, like you know this point right here works. And so you take that x and that y, and you plug them in for x and for y, and you solve for a. And that'll tell you what the scale factor is. Did any of you just understand what I just said? Ah, oh, good. All right. So it wouldn't be that hard to do. Just plug in for x and y, solve for the variable, it'll tell you the scale factor. All right, moving on. Uh, if I just give an equation, now you should know a lot of things about the uh, graph, whereas before I gave you the graph and said, what do we know about the equation? So this graph, tell me some stuff you'd know about it. Raise your hand if you can tell me something. It has three roots. So that could be like a bounce and a cut through, or what else are the options? Three cut throughs, or a snake. Yep. All right. What else? What else do you know? Yes. Uh, the right hand side must go what? Up. You are correct because it's positive in front. I know it's going up over here. Okay. Anything else I know? Goes down on the left side because we know that it's odd. You're right. So the left side goes down. Now, I don't know what it does in between. I don't know if it's a bounce and a cut through. I don't know if it's two cut throughs or three cut throughs, I mean. Or it could be the snake. All right. One more thing you're not catching. Yes. There it is. The y intercept is where x equals 0, right? So that would become 0, and that would become 0, and so y equals 5, and so we know it hits right there. Okay. Does that eliminate any of our options as far as bounces or or cut throughs? Could it still be snaking its way through? Yeah, it could still be snaking its way through. Like, oh, I'm terrible at drawing this. Okay. But anyway, yes, there's still a lot of options, but we know it touches there. All right, good enough. Generally, what's on the final? There's a lot of stuff on the final. Uh, and polynomials is a topic that we've just covered pretty in depth. Uh, recursion we're covering at the end of the hour. Probability we've already covered. Exponentials, things that have an x in the exponent, or the graphs of like y equals 2 to the x versus y equals 3 to the x, that kind of stuff. Uh, those were the ones that they kind of went like that. And then if it goes through steeper, it's the next one. Um, and then you shift them by like putting plus 1 here or minus 3 there, makes it move down 3. All right, then there's rationals, which are the ones that are like 1 over x. And those are the ones that had a graph that were like this. Remember those? Okay. And there was linear programming. That was the kind that are like uh, you're trying to solve for the greatest profit or whatever, and you end up with a feasible region. And what's the important part of the feasible region? The vertices, the corners. You check those. All right. Next thing is uh, matrices. Uh, matrices were those just little problems that had like two, three, four, five, and you put a five out front. That, that would be, it's called a scale factor, and then you just multiply it all out. What would your answer be in this case? A what by what? A two by two. All right, good enough. And then there's applications problems like the distance equals rate times time kind of questions, and there's log questions on there. So we're going to go through a few of these things. Here's a probability question. See if you can do this one. I'm just going to do a little smattering of each kind as a review. I'm going to hit pause while you try to figure this one out. Okay, so there's the start of my binomial I do for this. And then if I'm focusing on the boys, that number's here, then that number needs to go there too. And these two numbers have to add up to three. So if there's going to be two boys, there must be one girl. And when you multiply that all out, you'd have 0.375. Okay, could you have done that with a tree? Yep, you could have. Could have made a big tree and then found the ones where there were two boys in it and divided by all of the possible ones, etc. All right, let's move on. Exponentials, do you remember this equation where you have the end value and you have the start value and you have 1 plus the rate and then the, this is usually in years but it's time if nothing else? See if you can plug in these numbers into the right spots and figure out what your end value is. Your grandma gives you $5,000 but you can't touch it until you're 95 years old like she is and she wants to just see how it grows. Okay. Okay, so there's the start of this equation, and you would solve it and get around 5 million. Is that what you get? 
five million bucks. So if you wait long enough, uh, your money can grow to a lot.